Hey, joining us now on the Marmy Rock Show, I was glad to get Everlit back on the show. We just had the chance to see these guys perform live with Fuel and Trap a couple weeks ago. And, uh, guys, welcome to the show. Hey, hey, what's going on? Thanks for having us. <laughs> Man, I'm so glad to have you guys back. You know, I got to I gotta admit something to you guys. When I went to that show, I didn't actually realize that you were on that bill until you took the stage. And I was so happy because I've been trying to see you guys live for uh, – for months and months now, so uh, congratulations on that tour. Cool. Yeah, thanks. That's what we do, though. We don't announce any tours. We just we just show up Secret and show everybody. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's our thing. So tell us a little bit about that tour. What were some of the highlights about getting out there and uh, playing some bass with Fuel and Trap? What were some of the high points? Uh, I mean, honestly, from start to finish was a high point for us. I mean, we really, we got out there day one, you know, everything. The vibe was awesome. The other bandmates and it just took us, accepted us in real quick. You know, we had a good time. The energy at every show we did was just on point. The crowd. The, the crowds were phenomenal. I mean, from start to finish, you know, they were there for the opening act. They were there to, you know, rock out with us. They were there, you know, and they stayed strong throughout the whole night. So it was really, uh, you know, a great time. And we had a few cities that uh, we, you know, me personally, I don't know about the other guys who've never been to that were absolutely beautiful. Like uh, Portland, Maine was just awesome. It was a great, great city. Yeah. It's, they all root for the Patriots out there. Yeah, that's the low life. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's yeah, just a chameleon. You know, and, you know it, was, it was another tour that was cool to add on to the, you know, the roster of stuff that we've done, bands we've met that, you know, we've listened to for a, a, a you know, a large portion of our lives, and they were cool. You know, you're always scared to go meet a band you've been listening to and following and, and worry about whether or not they're going to be mean people, you know. So it's cool to know that they're cool people and, you know. Now, I've had the pleasure of seeing the Fuel at that venue in Lancaster because they're kind of like the hometown boys there. Uh, was that one of the, the, the more uh, special shows of the night, or were they all like that of the tour? Yeah, you know what? That night particularly, because, I mean, myself, uh, you know, a, a lot of people are such huge Fuel fans. And I've, you know, I've, I've listened to them early on from the start of their career to, you know, obviously present. I even listened to their new album, which is crazy good. Uh, and it, Brett, you know, he, I'm glad to have, he's back in the band. And it was just so killer to hear him perform a song to, like, to as good, if not better, than his, his studio quality that, you know, we all grew up listening to. It, he just, he killed it. It was awesome. Yeah, that's a really, really cool experience. Especially well, that one was sold out too. That was oversold. Out. <laughs> yeah, most of the floors were packed. Like Three floors. You know, all, all floors were packed. Yeah, people looking down at you. Uh, it was really an incredible experience. Yeah. Now, I must say, uh, you know, I've had you on the show before, but that was the first time I got to catch you live. You guys are an amazing live band, and I mean that sincerely. Now, is that kind of always been a trademark of your band, is the live show? Yeah, that, that, that's definitely something that we we strive for. I mean, you know, you hear a lot of bands say, you know, we whether it's one person or a hundred people, you know, we play with the same intensity. I mean, that's all cool and everything, but we try to take it to that next level. I mean, it, it's you know, it's really about performing music that they're you know that your fans and people are going to hopefully like and listen to. But it's also about just showing that raw energy, at, you know, at its finest. And you know, a lot of bands that I grew up listening to and going to their shows, you know, like uh, one in particular story of the year. I mean, every show, these dudes were just, the energy that they came, brought to the stage was uncanny. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I'd like to throw in on that. Um, just, like, above and beyond the whole energy thing for me, this is Ryan and Singer. Nothing disappoints me more than going to see a band that I love on record and then just standing there disappointed, like, man, these guys can't even play their own music. Then I don't even like the band anymore, really. It's hard to have that same respect. Now, so... Have that feeling towards going to see other live music. I want to ha- hold our our lives to the highest standard possible, you know. So people are like, "Wow, these guys sound just like their feet is." Yeah. So, um, man, the last time I talked to you guys, uh, you had just put the single out, Phoenix Will Rise, but of course now, uh, since then, it's been a little bit since I talked to you, the full EP is out. Tell us a little bit about uh, the process of recording that. Where did you record that? Who produced it? Uh, we laid that one down in, uh, Bethesda, Maryland with Taylor Larson, uh, a while ago now at this point. We released it in June, um, and we're actually talking to him now about, um, getting in there and doing the next EP that we'll be releasing in 2016. 
And we have another single that we're going to be probably releasing in February. So um, we got we got stuff coming up, and you know it was a really really fun experience. Obviously, we enjoyed it. We're going to go back to him, and you know we like what he does. It's our first time actually working with a real producer. So you know you know it was was our first experience with with somebody who who could you know work with us to write music rather than just you go in and you have an engineer record your songs and you leave with the, the songs sounding exactly the same, just maybe a little bit more polished, you know, like, that's actually producer touch, which is cool. Yeah, it's nice to, you know, be in the studio with somebody as passionate about music as we are that, you know, wants to strive for the best product possible because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all proud of the work we do and we want to put out stuff that, you know, we're proud of and he's proud of and I think, I think we did a good job, uh, you know, uh, accomplishing that the first time and like Jordan said, you know, that's why we're looking forward to getting back in there with him and, you know, uh, coming out with some more uh, songs for the upcoming EP. And, uh, yeah, so it was overall great experience. You know, it was real smooth, real fluid. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'd like to add, last time we were on your show, it was, we were a four-piece. And I was on bass, and, uh, you know, Anthony was the only guitar player. Since, since then, you probably noticed live, we had two guitar players. I was yeah. Short, I was on guitar now. Rhythm guitar and Kyle is now in the band playing bass. So now we're five feet and you got him here. So he can say what's up. Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a real, ple- it's, it's been a real pleasure uh, playing with these guys. Uh, we've been on a couple tours together now. And uh, just touching on the energy that you saw when we played live, uh, I've never really experienced anything like that as far as playing music with guys. So. Definitely, uh, they've held me to high standards when, you know, getting in the band and just, uh, making sure that, you know, everything we do as far as putting ourselves in front of people really makes us look and sound how we should sound and how the album sounds. So, um, I was looking back, you know, as I was getting ready for your interview and I just, uh, happened to rewatch the Breakaway, um, music video. Tell me a little bit about the making of that video. Was that done up in Philly? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, yeah, that actually, uh, we reached out to uh, a guy in the area, I think Mitch Martinez. Uh, really, really just incredibly great dude. Uh, he's worked with a couple of huge bands like August Burns Red, has done a number of just stellar, stellar videos and music videos. So, you know, we looked at some of his product, uh, and we obviously loved what we saw, and we decided to go with him. So we did the first, we did two days of filming with him, and, you know, from day one, we got them set. You know, he had a whole team with him, you know, and I, I, we've all worked with other people that shot music videos before, and in the past, you know, you kind of do that thing where you show up, you know, nobody kind of knows what the game plan is, you're kind of like, oh, does this look cool? Oh, I guess, let's shoot it. You know, it wasn't like that. We we showed up from day one, he had this clipboard, I'll never forget, we walked the first day I go, and I'm looking at this guy's clipboard, and I see just pages and pages of scenes that are written out with detail that he wants to get, how he wants to shoot it, what lens he wants to use. So, I mean, just from the first minute, you knew you were in great hands. And from that, you know, from, like, that moment on, it was just such uh, an incredible experience. You know, we, all of us can, I think, agree on that. We've never had an experience like that shooting a video. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was had, awesome. He had a lot of really cool equipment, too. Like, he had this, the professional dolly, like a pan thing where he could, like, slide the camera, like, nice and steadily across the room. And he had, uh, he had, like, this big screen that he could then play the footage back on, so... Right after we shot the scene, everyone could stand around and watch it. Yeah, it was awesome. And the coolest thing, too, is, you know what? The awesome thing about that video is that it was shot in, like, the top of the line 4K. So, like, even as TV technology gets better, that video is going to start looking better on, on screen. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> it's considering we never, you know, we've all, uh, every video we've ever done, so it was, you know, a friend of ours saying like, hey, let me, you know, let me shoot this at, add some more portfolio or, you know, pay, we we're doing it for two or three hundred bucks or something like that. He really treated us like we were, you know, movie stars. So good. We were like, hell yeah. You know, we had makeup artists, we had help there feeding us songs and stuff. We were like, what the? We were living the life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey I I noticed looking back at your uh, your Facebook page today that you guys were at Rock Allegiance and we were there as well. Do you guys get to any of the other big festivals? Or I mean, that was kind of a unique one in the Philly area. Do you get to any of the other big festivals? Well, we were just there hanging out. Uh, we did a couple. Oh of no, but that's what I meant. Like, do you, do you go to any of the, any of the other ones as, as fans as well as being in the band? Yeah, we try we try to get out as much as we can. I mean, obviously we're getting a little bit older, and you know. 
got jobs and stuff. But yeah, we as, when we when we don't have other commitments, we definitely want to get out and go to shows and go to festivals and stuff. Do as much as we can. Yeah, that one was a pretty cool one, man. We had a good time up there, and I'm sorry I missed you guys in the crowd. I would have stopped and said hi if I'd have seen you there. But um, hey, you guys are at a band rehears. You guys are at a band rehearsal only too. Tell the world what goes on at an Everlit band rehearsal. Uh, well, this interview right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we normally just we find everything in the world to do except for uh, play music, paint each other's fingernails. <laughs> it's a real totally experience. Brady yeah. hair. Yeah. You know. so High brow kind of stuff that yeah, you'd expect out of a stellar rock band such as us. Well. <laughs> no, we, you know, we, if we don't have anything, you know, if we don't have any tours or shows or studio coming up, uh, it's pretty laid back. We just try to, you know, have a good time. We'll rehearse a couple tracks to get warmed up. And then we write. So unless we have, you know, shows or stuff coming up, we don't really play the, you know, the already recorded material unless we're trying to warm up. We try to do... That stuff only if we're getting ready for something. So we try to make band practice as fun as possible. So speaking of uh, warming up and shows coming up, you guys, uh, I noticed there isn't a lot on the calendar yet for the start of uh, 2016. So are you planning on going back out on tour, or what's the plan for uh, live stuff in 2016? Yeah, we've got we've got some stuff in the works. Um, so we'll be announcing dates soon. We had a obviously the end of, end of the year um, is always a little bit low for the music industry, especially the, the rock industry on the the northeast where we're at. So, um, you know, we, everything should be taken back up soon. We got some stuff to announce. Um so we're we're excited for what, what what we've got with the release of our next single plus the release of this next EP for next year and we'll definitely be out on the road supporting it. So we we expect twenty sixteen to be a, a, our best year. And do you have one overriding goal? Uh, I've been asking a lot of bands this since I start the new year. Do you have a band goal for 2016? Is there somewhere, like, have you visioned where you want to be by uh, this time next year? I mean, you know, you don't want to put your expectations out there. You want to keep them low. So, you know, you really kind of you look back at the end of the year and you say, you know what, we did a lot more than I thought. Yeah, this year we played 12 shows. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. I, I know. I think Jim Blossom's done I got one. I got one. But this time next year, I hope we're getting paid to play the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, the day, that's, that's, yeah, that's the ultimate goal. We want to we wanna be making money, not losing money. We you know, we're it. still at the point where we're doing really cool stuff. We're playing, you know, great shows, and we're playing with fans that we've grown up with, and we're touring, and, you know, we're getting a lot of great experience and new fans and stuff, but it still costs money to do it. You know, and your truck breaks down. You, you know, everything. You know, we're still at the point where one hiccup, your, your bank account takes your hit. So, you know, we're we're improving every day. But yeah, that's a good point. I'd love to be doing this and make some money. Yeah, you know, we do make we do make some money when we play like around the area. Like, well, if I have to come play because we're going to draw really well around here, and we do make money for our merch and stuff. But just being paid to to be on the on the road and do the tour and stuff. That'll, that, to me, will mean that we've made it where we've been trying to get. Yeah. I mean, to elaborate on that, I, I, I'm sure that you're aware of, you know, the, the economics of, especially the rock industry and how promoters are and how venues are treating, you know, with treating bands, especially rock bands. You know, they make it very difficult for bands like us to stay out on the road and do what we do. Uh, you know, you know, you get to a venue, they'll take a percentage from you, this and that and the other thing. So hopefully, like they said, just in summary, just to kind of be on the opposite side of that point, so that way we can, you know, go out there and meet these new fans, connect with the people, and just share our music with everyone possible and have it in, in, in a fashion that we can do it comfortably, you know? Not even making a lot of money, just being able to stay out on the road and just, yeah. you know, yeah. keep doing what we want to do. That's a real realistic goal, man, and uh, no wiser words were ever said, man. We preach that to folks listening to the show all the time, man. When you're at a local show like that, go buy a CD from the band, go buy a shirt from the band, and it doesn't matter if you don't need another shirt, man. Go support them because uh, it's how these fans are able to stay out on the road and keep coming and playing the music that we love. So, um, hey, yeah, the guys yeah. from Everlit from Philadelphia, man, it's been great talking to you all again, and uh, I'm so glad I finally got to see you live, and I'm sure it won't be the last time. So, uh, thanks for being back yeah, on the show. Not, man. Yeah. We had a great time that night. We hope we hope we get to see you again. All right, guys. Thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. All right, Carl. You have a good one.